This video, I'm going to show you how I design and plan out my welding project so I know exactly what material to buy and how it'll fit together and I get the result that I want that can do everything I want it to do. A lot of times in my projects, honestly, I gloss over this in the build videos because I think it can be long and tedious, but I'm working on a simple project today, so it'll be a good example. I'm building a welding cart for a new multi-process welding machine that I have here in the shop. It's pretty cool and I'm excited about this. And I know if I just head out and start building things, it's not going to come out the way that I want it. So I'm going to follow the full engineering process that I'd use for a more complicated build like the belt grinder or go-kart or things like that. So the first step here is to define the requirements and know exactly what you need this to do. So this is relatively simple here. I know that I want it to be able to fit this welding machine. If you're wondering about this welding machine, it's the HTP Revolution 2500. This machine is not even available to the public yet, but I got one early because they had me produce some videos for their website that show how to use everything. I got to tell you, it's pretty impressive. It has more features than I've ever seen on a multi-process machine, but because of that, it has a lot of accessories. So in addition to the machine, the cart needs to be able to fit a TIG welding torch, stick weld electrode. It needs two MIG guns for steel and aluminum work clamp, foot pedal, and I want to make room at the bottom of the cart to be able to add in a TIG cooler so I could use a water-cooled torch if I want to in the future with this setup. We're going to move on from there to the next stage of design, and that is the conceptual design and coming up with different concepts. A lot of times when I'm working through concept design, I'll look at what's already available out there to get some ideas and maybe brainstorm a few. But in this case, I've built a cart in the past and it worked pretty well. So I want to go with the same concept. There are several things that I want to improve on in this concept. So it's pretty simple. I have a bottom base and I have a top. I'll just draw a couple of views here on the paper. Then I'm going to move on to the detailed design phase. Now in a more complicated project, this is where I jump on the CAD system because I can put a lot of detail in there. In this case, I'm going to keep it pretty simple and just sketch it out here on paper. During this detail design phase, this is where I put in dimensions, I define what size and thicknesses of material I'm going to use, and outline really how is everything going to fit. Here's the important part with the detail design phase that I always do is I go back to my requirements and I'll put a check mark by each requirement as I've satisfied that in the detailed design. So I can trace it needs to hold six accessories to, okay, I have six accessory hooks here. It needs to hold a foot pedal. I have a shelf with room for a foot pedal to fit. Consumable case, that fits on the shelf. TIG cooler, there's room on a lower shelf for that. So I've accounted for all these things in my detailed design and I can be confident that at the end, it's gonna work out. Now during this stage of the design process, it's important to document everything really well if you're working for a customer so that you can both agree upon what you're gonna have. Since I'm just building this for myself, a sketch like this is gonna be good enough and spending more time on it isn't gonna add a whole lot more value to me because I've already figured out what pieces I need and how they fit together. From here, I can move on to create a bill of materials. Now, a bill of materials is just a list of all the different pieces that are going to go together. And if I were working in a CAD system, this would be pretty automatic for me as I went through the drafting process. But since I'm doing it by hand, I once again use the checkmark method. And I go through every part and I put a checkmark by it as I write down the specific material that I need. That way I can be confident that uh, my list of all the materials, everything that's going to fit together, covers the entire detail design. Now with a bill of materials, this usually isn't enough to go shopping because material comes in certain lengths depending on your steel supplier. And so I'll create a shopping list off of that where I figure out, okay, I need these pieces. How can I cut them and be efficient with my material? What lengths do I need to buy? Do I need to cut shorter to haul in my vehicle? Things like that. So I'll work out my full shopping list and know exactly what to buy. Now with my shopping list, I'm ready to get started, but I want to point something out. I laid out this process from start to finish in distinct steps, but you can actually loop back because sometimes a later step can give you information for an earlier step. And even with a simple example like this, as I was writing out my shopping list, I realized that the length that I made the cart is going to push this into an additional piece of material that I'd rather not buy. And I could save a little cost just by reducing one dimension by an inch. 
So I went ahead and made that design change because it wasn't going to have any negative impact on me. So I changed that in the design. And also, since I was building it for myself, I made a few design changes on the fly as I was building it that I'll cover in the next video because I'm making a specific video just about the full cart build. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate it. I support these videos by the sale of my online courses. So if you are going through trying to learn to weld on your own at home, uh, check them out. There's about 30 steps or so depending on the process and I walk you through in a small lesson with specific exercise to be able to advance your skills a lot more quickly without getting overwhelmed with information. So you can learn all about welding on these kind of videos and, and that's really helpful too. But when it comes down to building the skill, my courses have turned out to be really helpful for a lot of people and if you don't like it, then just shoot me an email and I'll give you your money back right away. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.